that is a prayer. Um, it's an entity because it's had human attention and human prayers put into it. And this is about the prayer ceremony that we have in the United States of America that we call Thanksgiving. And often in that prayer ceremony, when we are praying that everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving today in our whole country, regardless of what our ethnic backgrounds are, everyone has done the little thing where you have a child pull a wishbone with you. And the thing is, the, the adult or the elder or the uncle, the mother, or whoever's doing that, wishes that the child gets what the child wishes. And that's a prayer. And it's a prayer for the seven generations, and it's a food prayer. And food prayers work like we gather in the fields. That's the congregation. Who's hungry and wants to come plant the garden is the congregation of the church. And then we pray while we're planting. And then, I can't remember all the four parts exactly right now, but the basic idea is when we harvest and we share that food, we share it with everybody. And we need to share it with everybody in the world because we are one planet. This is Gaia, the living planet. We'll talk about that. This right here. Sure. <laughs> no more prizes for predicting rain, only for building arcs. I think in every country of the United States, of, of the world, we should have places where women and children are safe and can raise food. And they can raise food for everybody else, too. I mean, it's so easy to raise food if you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, you just walk outside while I'm talking and start filming Greenhouse 2020. This was a plastic... A plastic carport greenhouse for the first four years that I was living here. And it had the lemon tree in it and the fig tree. Got here about three years ago. And I've already cut two more fig trees from it last fall. And this is a peach tree over here, Peachy Keen. The trees all have names. <laughs> and um, Peachy Keen had 16 peaches. I'm talking like five inch wide, gorgeous, perfect peaches the first year. And last year she had 120. And this year I have no idea. But I've learned every year because I've never had fruit trees before. And it's really easy to fall in love with them. And this is all the harder it is to do this. Black plastic buckets. And you have to pack the dirt tightly around the edges so that it doesn't run through and just leave you with a hard ball of stuff in there. You have to pretend it's the ground and you make it solid like earth again and you refurbish it and you keep making it grow and look at it. This all lived through the winter that we had here which was 30 degrees lower than normal. Okay, okay this is One Acre Farm in Eco Region 78. That's Northern California and Southern Oregon. It's a uh, 1,300 feet elevation, and um, when I first got here, I planted the hawthorn berries, which are those gray, prickly-looking things up there, just by dropping the seeds in the ground. And a week later, I put in the two pine trees that are long needle pines in the background. Recently this year, those two wooden boxes there hold um, a hazelnut and a cherry tree. And the tall one that's at the back of this uh, greenhouse frame is a mulberry and they all just got put in the ground last week this thing that you're looking at right in front that looks obviously bent is um, a trampoline greenhouse you cut the trampoline in half and then you stand it into concrete in the corners you can see one right there by that bag of leaves and um, and we left up the, uh, we had an eight inch snowfall suddenly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that has never happened the whole time we've been here. And it had that black plastic there over it. So that bent the steel pipes, but we just have to take them down and put them back up again. And this makes a diffuse light canopy for growing small plants. So when you have lettuces and other seedlings you want to start, you don't want them to have so much light, you have that kind of a black plastic clamped onto this over there. And of course, you can cover it with anything you want. That is a trampoline cut in half with um, two, four, six, eight, ten, 12 pieces of chain link top line, it's called, and you force them together. It makes a 20-foot long um, hoop house building 
for under two hundred dollars. Try that. Try to find something like that on the internet. That's Bet great. you can't. And you can get the trampolines by calling up people that have them for sale at yard sales and saying, I'll give you more than anybody else if you keep that trampoline for me. You can get it. Trust me. And it won't cost you more than 30 bucks. you know. I'm serious. And so that next thing is a swing set. And there is 18-inch topsoil under there. When I first got here, there was no topsoil. You see right here? Right here in this foreground, there's two Brussels sprouts back in that, the end of this like rectangle here. Uh -huh. There's nothing underneath there. There's just rock here. And there were big barrels where they burnt um, metals and glass and all kinds of things here. People had trashed this land really deeply. This is a restoration. You understand there was nothing alive here when I got here. And the land is in full friggin' rejoice. Every tree and everything, like I say in that plant genetics history document, that every it's like every single thing celebrates and the living beings are too numerous to count. Like trillions and trillions of microorganisms live under just that piece of plastic there. And that's where the corn was last year and it'll have something else this year. Mm -hmm. The corn is probably gonna go down one space that way. But as you look down there, this place is as idyllic as any place you could be. On that far hillside, there are elk, I saw a uh, Canadian lynx right on the other side of the fence within 100 feet of where I'm standing. And all of this land is way lower on the other side of the fence because it's been grazed by cattle and horses exclusively. And so that land has way lower fertility because the animals have been fed GMO food too. And their manure is detrimental to the life of the microorganisms and this is why people whose grandpas used to have huge gardens full of tomatoes and peppers and and anything and now the gardens don't do so well and we put some steer manure on it and we don't understand now we're not getting anything that is the residual gmo ruining the land but you can restore it but you need to use the culture that restores it when um, the Bear Creek uh, nurseries and people were first trying to make organic pears, they were putting fruit tree compost, like regular um, hot composting, you know, when you bring things to a high temperature. And they were trying to do that, and it didn't work to make the trees grow better. And the work of Elaine Ingham, the soil microbiologist, showed us that you, the, the microorganisms you need to grow trees are the ones that are found in that white stuff that's in the rotting wood in the woods. And you take that and you soak it overnight, not enough to drown it completely, and then put the bucket, the five gallon bucket of water into a sprayer and spray it on an entire orchard and that will do it. You spray one bucket of microbes onto an orchard as much as you could spray a huge tanker truck of water. It does it hurts nothing. And that's what trees need to live on. And Elaine Ingham's work showed us that was the third catch in who people were because, because we didn't even understand how genetics transferred for many centuries. Can you talk a little bit about the rabbits and how, because I'm looking at a bumper sticker right here, rabbits equals super gardens, and I know that oh, that's a big don't get part of your, um, yeah, you rabbits know, part of your idea super of, gardens. about, you know, what rabbits can do to your soil and help you in a lot of ways. Well, the situation we're facing right now in our country is that the, the genetics have been modified, and modified just simply means changed. Well, if you have a person that just look at it like in a separated way, which it isn't, if you have a dog and its genes are modified so that it doesn't make toenails and feet anymore, that's not going to really be a dog. And if you cross that dog with other dogs and it makes those dogs start to have um, tails that uh, or spines that twirl around so they can't walk straight, that's not really a dog either. Because the word reproduce means to be able to make one that's like the originals you know, uh, allowing for colors and, you know, shapes and, and accidents of growth and things like that. They're, they're the like individuals. 
And historically, we have line bred animals, and we've line bred royalty. Many cultures in the world line bred roy royalty. And so that's the way you do it to improve your stock. But if you do that with the genetically modified animals, it's a disaster. I've raised rabbits for 25 years. I started raising them in Sonoma County, California, and I had a gourmet rabbit meat business in wine country for many years, processing the rabbits, and the rabbits were so plentiful and so wonderful that I could um, take them to the restaurant and get enough money to go to town and buy all the feed for every other animal on my property every week. I did that for 10 years. During the same time, I had a powwow booth. Mm -hmm. And there was a Native American sweat lodge on the side of my property. And the Indian people were getting back to the land, too, because they, you know, like Nako says, I come from a long line of people in displacement. And that's what we don't need anymore on our world. And this is why we need peace and planting, which is the peace and planting outreach. Peace and the letter N, planting, is an open group on Facebook. And it tells people about the plan to feed all the children. Because the only thing that we can do in proactive work, you see, farming is proactive work. Growing food for people. If you've ever heard the quote, the height of, of altruism or whatever they described it as is planting a tree that you won't live to see the fruit of. <laughs> I love that. Pecans live 300 years. Get a pecan tree if you can and plant it. <laughs> you know, and that's what I'm doing is planting trees. And Keith Johnson just got a PhD from the permaculture people, uh, from David Holmgren. And um, he's the person that I first heard permaculture from. He came to my property and said, geez, I guess you were doing permaculture before you heard about it. And I went, what's permaculture? And then I got my certification and I found out that all these classes that I teach on heritage skills are all, um, they're all permaculture because it's permanent culture and permanent agriculture. And it doesn't matter what you call it. We need to have places in every country, land like this, that it's safe for women and children to live there. And that there's gates up here and you can't get through the gate unless you have a license, you know, to get through here. And, and you have to be a woman or a child. And if you have a bad baby daddy, you know, he should be working somewhere, building bridges in the United States far enough away from you that he can't get here and bother you, you know. And if he does, he'll run into the, the guard. Because the children that are raised there, instead of going to college, they should, they should guard their lands for four years and practice their skills and decide what they want to do and then go forward from the lands that they were raised in as whole people that weren't assaulted, weren't sold into slavery, weren't abused, weren't fed horrible things because chemical rape is hurting your insides. And we've been hurt so many ways. I mean, I smarted up to that as a 19-year-old when I moved to Washington, D.C. and had some experimental doctors, um, military ex-military docs, um, give me what would approximately be 10,000 times the dosage of birth control pills. And I didn't have any periods for four months. And I grew a full beard at 19 years old with a full hair, head of hair and, you know, um, fine, fine female equipment, mm -hmm. you know. Oh my God, and and nobody cared about that. Well, when you talk about, because um, you sent me some written things, you talked about chemical rape. Yes, what you chemical feel rape is. Um, how do you say it? Something about c touching our insides without it's permission. It's non-consensual touch. Rape mm -hmm. is non-consensual touch of somebody's privates mm -hmm. and insides. Mm -hmm. You know, and I say that thing. You know that, um, and and the reason. And all those reasons and how this all connects in our world is very important. You know, if you look, if you're into Facebook, look at Fern Fedora. That's the official mm -hmm. spokesperson for the Great Barrier Brief System. And right now there's a woman on Emily's list uh, called Kay Hagen, who's having a hell of a hard time over there because she's 
um, trying to fight um, a thing to ban all contraception. They're trying to ban contraception in North Carolina at a time when we're about to have genetically modified human beings coming to birth. And nobody that's educated about this topic that's between, that is fertile at this time, once they're educated, no one is going to want to get pregnant until they have gene testing and counseling. And people are going to be, you know, I mean, we already have anger management problems with a lot of people in our culture. They think it's okay to get pissed off and to hurt people for any reason that they're pissed off about. Well, how are they going to feel when they find out that um, their kids are going to be so modified that they might have miniature sex organs? That's one of the common mutations I see in the rabbits. Mm -hmm. from where that came through, you know? And how about um, your granddaughter um, being born and having um, her ovaries fused into her spine so that as she gets older and the, and the stuff develops, she's in horrible pain all the time. And we already don't know how to fix a lot of things with modern mm -hmm. medicine because it's chemicals and chemicals don't right. work in people. We can only use whatever our ancestors did at least 500 years ago. And if they couldn't do it, you shouldn't be putting it in or on your skin anywhere. It's that simple. And I want to ban things. Like, I want to ban aluminum. Come on. If we can make right. cannabis illegal for all these years, let's make aluminum illegal. Stop pulling it out of the ground. Make it illegal. Especially in food things. Mm -hmm. How about banning BSP? How about MSG? I mean, how about aloxin that's in all the white bread, you know, that causes you to have... Mm -hmm. um, all sorts of diabetic problems. The chemicals that we are being fed by chemical rape, by whatever method, you know, we just saw what happened to our states on the East Coast. I can't remember the words right, but everybody knows Kentucky and West Virginia and all those states are being horribly raped. Their people are being chemically raped. They're being touched in their insides by chemicals that aren't food. And the only thing we can do is turn now, turn to the work, Throw yourself like seed. Shake off the sadness and recover your spirit. Sluggish, you'll never see the wheel of fate that brushes your heel as it turns going by. The man who wants to live is the man in whom life is abundant. Now you're only giving food to that final pain, which is slowly winding you in the nets of death. But to live is to work, and the only thing which lasts is the work. So start then, turn to the work. Throw yourself like seed as you walk and into your own field. Don't turn your face, for that would be to turn it to death. And do not let the past weigh down your motion. Leave what's alive in the furrow, what's dead in yourself. For life does not move in the same way as a group of clouds. From your work, you will one day be able to gather yourself. Miguel de Unamundo, translated by Robert Bly. And it took me a long time to understand what he meant in the line, leave what's alive in the furrow, what's dead in yourself. In the field of your life, if you hate it, what somebody does to you, frickin' figure out how to not vibrate that to them and be real in the present moment. Do not take your dead shit and put it on everybody every morning, whining and complaining, you know, doing things to people for whatever reason. There's no reason to do that. But put what's alive into your life, you know. Plant your seeds, you know. Do the work. Find your medicine and use it. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know who made this flag, but this is the flag of the four nations, the black people, the red people, the yellow people, and the white people. And this is the true yin-yang that's present in life every day. The sky above and the earth below, blue and green. Life is not black and white. Oh, you just mix up all the different kinds of chickens and that gets you all totally random stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get you a meat bird, egg bird mm -hmm. um, group of birds, you know? Mm -hmm. And apricot looks lovely, and their feet all have to get greased so that they don't get scaly leg mite, which makes them be very uncomfortable and go into mm -hmm. less production.
And you have to know how to take care of creatures. They should mm -hmm. have clean water. And we're using grapefruit seed extract in the um, water. You clean the buckets and you don't use bleach because that ruins mm -hmm. your land. Mm -hmm. You use clean well botanical disinfectant mm -hmm. to wash your buckets. And then you fill it with fresh water and you put in GSC, about a half a teaspoon to a gallon. And they get a treatment of that every week. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Chickens are cannibals and carnivores. If you throw a dead chicken in there, the chickens will eat it without any problem. Um, uh, turkeys will not do this and are horrified. Ducks will not do this. No other bird does that. Mm -hmm. And these ch these birds have the highest incident of, you know, like they can kill germs good because they have a lot of them in the way that they are and the way that they mm -hmm. eat. But these birds are all perfectly satisfied and for a bird to be like that and be producing five mm -hmm. years later she has laid let's say she laid she's laid for four years so far this is her fifth summer so we don't know how long she's going to last us mm -hmm. but she's laying 300 at least eggs a year this this chicken hardly ever stops for four years and now the birds that you buy from the hatcheries none of them live to reproductive age mm -hmm. They look awful, they fight with the other hens, they have runny poop, and then they die. Or you kill them because you can't stand it any longer, you know, and they're not doing mm -hmm. anything. Isn't and that apricot. That's amazing. Beautiful. Uh, um, the ones that have the muffs on them are called Americanas. You see the face fist features that they have? Mm -hmm. And that's Muffy. That gray one is Apricot's daughter. I was going to say, are they related? So will you, will you get any chicks this year? Will you... Let oh, I have, I have, uh, I have them. Uh, no, I don't let them do it in there. It's too random. They just all get in the nest. They bust all the eggs. You just take all the eggs out and have somebody hatch them. And mm -hmm. that's about to happen. I do it early in the spring. So the earlier you do it, the more mature the birds are. And when they start laying in the fall, mm -hmm. they lay through the winter. Mm -hmm. See, but if you don't de develop your eggs till they're getting to the end of the time, then you have to raise those birds all the way through the winter till right. spring so wakes them up. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and that's called a well summer right there. That's another heritage breed. So there's three heritage breeds in here. That's the only one mm -hmm. that's that kind. And the other one that looks sort of like that, see those little light yellow lines in the right. feathers? Little tiny lines? That's his daughter with her. So there's one like that from his this crop last year. Right. We put 48 eggs to be hatched last year and we got 47 chicks. That's amazing. Does that tell you that that's live here? Mm -hmm. It yep. does. And and this is all you see this is all all in here was all thick thick grass and tangled blackberries we keep knocking it back but a little windbreak is good you know because do you this bring is a huge do you valley. bring your chicks to the markets and the rabbits no or just you private? can't do that you're not allowed to do that you in know the we state. just approved, don't you understand we approved you're, like neighborhood in phoenix we just did that um right neighborhood chickens uh, animals actually farm animals up to 100 pounds so you can have small like pot belly pigs or Small goats, well, that's you know? fine if you can sell them in your town, but I can't sell them yeah. where I live. I can't sell them on my property. Uh -huh. And there used to be a chicken and rabbit ex extension for for um, animals in California, and that was how I was able to deliver rabbits to the restaurants uh -huh. because they have a meat inspector, and that was grandfathered in from when the, all the Italians uh -huh. and French came here, uh -huh. and they wanted to raise their restaurant food on their own farms, which is what restaurants should do anyway. Well, maybe that's a piece of, that we could change. I mean, that's something that we, we could actually do. Please change yeah. it, because if I could sell fryers here off this property then i i would be paying my feed bill all, all the right. time and you said you were paying everything off the rabbits when you lived in where california were you? In california yeah in, in sonoma county in, oh in sonoma county yeah that's where the wine country actually yeah. is in marin county actually a descendant of um john muir who made muir woods in marin mm -hmm. county um, once took my rabbit my actual rabbits from california because i serviced the restaurant where he worked we won't say any of their names, but he mm -hmm. went to France and won an international rabbit cooking contest with his medley of rabbit prepared, which was pate and mm -hmm. um, a bacon wrapped loin mm -hmm. piece and whatever mm -hmm. it was, his third way. And he mm -hmm. won the international rabbit cooking contest with my rabbits in mm -hmm. France. So like this is one of those weird pieces of like information and I also have the longest standing article online at the Permaculture Activist magazine 
permacultureactivist.net forward slash articles forward slash rabbits where you see the article titled, titled Rabbits Love Roses because rabbits eat these blackberries and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how fast a rabbit go, grows. You know, they double to triple their, their body weight. This doe weighs about 11 pounds. She will have produced eight times three pounds, 24 pounds of meat in just four months to the day. Wow. And here's some that were born yesterday. <gasps> This is how big they oh are my gosh. when they're one day old. Oh they go from this to that in two weeks, people. This to this is a two-week journey. And this to your dinner plate is two months from now. This is a miracle on Earth. Very few things can do it, and they have not been genetically modified. Except the ones that have, I'm breeding it back out because mm -hmm. they were fed corn. Rabbits don't eat corn. Right. They don't have that kind of teeth. They eat broadleaf grasses. How many grasses. are in there? This one had 12. I had to remove two because she cannot nurse that many. Aww. And they're all seriously smaller. I may have to take out another one. The 12 is not possible and don't whine. <laughs> don't whine. That's not all right. It's not a sadness. <laughs> My mom was a beekeeper. You know that. The I next grew up with day, a... the next rabbits, day this is we what had... happens, see? <laughs> They're getting smaller, not bigger. So I have to go through them again and take out the smallest one. Because otherwise, I'm going to lose three by tomorrow. Can you, you have somebody That's else the it works. Like, take them and like... I hand. can, but I don't have somebody else. Well, she did didn't children deliver. children nurse them and feed them? Like, it's no, too hard? it doesn't work. No. It doesn't work, and you're not going to get meat. Could, a gro could grown ups take a, a little one like that and and raise it? Or Nobody it just... can spend the energy to do that when the dough can do it like this. It's a ridiculous waste of energy. You just throw it to the cats or the chickens. You just recycle it. It doesn't work that way. It's like asking women to deliver every child they're bearing. Their lives won't support it. Right. And you can't help them raise those children and make it still be the same thing. It's the same well, for any other animal. I mean, animal. that's interesting because when they took away women's ability to control the births through their own uh, herbs and their own practices, and then you'd nurse a baby for three years, and it was kind of a natural birth control, now we've got this no, constant... No, there isn't any natural birth control. We proved that on the farm. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, there you are they no know? safe days for young women at all. They can short cycle on 21 days and get pregnant on day two of their period. This is the actual scientific facts. And all the books that we wrote, even in the farm community that pioneered the home birth movement in America, are wrong. Mm -hmm. Just like the gene information out is mm -hmm. wrong. It's wrong, and it's going to be very important. We need to have absolute protection of contraception because it's not going to be funny if you're the one that, you know, and and But and you're talking work. about something beyond or besides uh, birth control. I'm talking about the things that we're going to birth. The people that are alive today, they don't realize it. It's the young people, you know, like an 11-year-old that's eating burgers, you know, uh, as her diet. Mm -hmm. And then she gets starts getting back aches, you know, because it's her ovaries are developing and the mm -hmm. eggs are wrong. And so it can't develop a proper ovary and it mm -hmm. fastens into your back. Mm -hmm. And then they don't know why. But if she gets pregnant when she's a teenager before she's had any counseling or anything like that, that if, depending upon what the damage mm -hmm. is. And you understand it's random. R-A-N hyphen D-U-M-B. Mm -hmm. It and is uh, not anything mm -hmm. like a regular mutation. Mm -hmm. I have seen babies born with six fingers. It's just like a dew claw on a dog. You take the scissors and you snip it off, and it's not a problem. It isn't damaged. Mm -hmm. But yes, those people will carry that gene. And when we save every person that's a premature birth, we don't do any good to our human genome connection when we mm -hmm. don't when we do that mm -hmm. and i've worked in the developmental centers in california mm -hmm. where they have little humans hanging in bags on the wall that are people that they, they we don't know if they can talk or what and they're just hang on a wall and their parents come and get them later and they have these special things and that's really not a right because no animal in the world would do that and that's another form of chemical rape 
because it's not all right for them to force these people to raise developmentally developed fetuses that <laughs> should have been aborted when the person was uncomfortable or when they were tested at stage three or four <laughs> or something like that. The big clue to it all is, folks, nobody lives forever. Nobody gets out of here alive. Not any animal, not any plant, nothing lives forever. But isn't that kind of the twisted elite agenda that they're ex trying to extend a few people's no, lives to? No, it's the a... facts of life. No, I know no that's the facts. No one lives but, here. But we're distorting Nobody gets... the facts through the technology now. Don't speak we to me. Well, they are. Don't speak we to me. Don't speak they to me. Hmm. I'm speaking you the truth of how right. the life flow, flow but works. But how can we change what they're doing? I then mean, ask that question. Yeah. But don't tell me we and they in my conversation. Okay, well, how can we change? I have to oppose you for okay. your generalized statements. <laughs> right. I do not allow people to say, we're not doing anything about the problem. I am doing something about well, this I'm problem. I am doing something, too. And I intend to do something do? about it. And I intend to feed all our children organic food and raise a crop of people so we can have descendants here. And if the girls are smart, they'll learn how to find out how to fix their genes. And by the time they're mm -hmm. 35, they could have a child. Mm -hmm. I had two children at 38 and 40. Mm -hmm. It was not what I would advise. Mm -hmm. I think you should have children when you're in your 30s mm -hmm. and not in your 20s because you don't quit growing to your 25. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be taking care of our children and we mm -hmm. should be using good contraception. And that's what we're going to have to have. But part, part of... But, uh, well, while the United States of America is more sentimental, more <laughs> money goes out of the animal aisles in this country than any supermarket aisle mm -hmm. in the in the country. We feed our friggin' chihuahuas while human beings are starving around the planet. I have no respect for this in human beings. I have unconditional love for everybody on the planet. I have no respect for people that do that. I have no respect for those who dishonor our bodies. And a corporate thing is not a human being. Mm -hmm. And if it is a human being, we should prosecute them for murdering the humans. <laughs> you know, it's very simple. You can't have it both ways. And this is the skeleton in the closet that they don't want us to hear. But I don't care if they hear about it. And I'm not interested in opposing them. And I don't care about the us and they game at all. I care about that we get it together and feed the children. Now. Now. We must do that. And we must slowly, completely do that. And we must counsel the ones that are here. And I'm sorry, but the truth is going to be that many of these people will never be able to reproduce because we don't have the knowledge to make them be able to do that. Well, guess what? I've had like 40 children in my life before I had fertility surgery at 37. And I love all of those children completely. Mm -hmm. And they love me desperately too. And a lot of them were the actual children of my friends that I was taking care of while mm -hmm. they were busy doing other things mm -hmm. in that large community. And it doesn't matter. And you can love somebody else's child or you can, mm -hmm. you know, raise your, your sister's kids with her, mm -hmm. you know, whose husband got killed in a car accident or something. You know, you mm -hmm. can just do whatever. I raised my sister and her two children. She's now mm -hmm. a nationally certified school teacher. And that's mm -hmm. one of the best things I ever did mm -hmm. with my life. I made it that uh, 30 kids every year get our family grounding and mm -hmm. wisdom. 30 children. I did that by raising my sister and being the dude mm -hmm. for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I just got off that job at 60. Huh? <laughs> I've only had 10 years of life to myself on this whole planet. And this mm -hmm. is what I've done in the 10 years. Mm -hmm. Six of it has been one acre farm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm making a demonstration. I'm trying to show what we should do. Right. This is where children should be living, like here with the gate. And nobody can get on the property at all. There's always an mm -hmm. adult in attendance. And the children's mm -hmm. lives are safe and nobody is coming here and getting them. And nobody's showing them games where people are screaming and getting hurt <laughs> and where we're blowing things up as if that's a goal in life. That is not a goal in life, dear children. The goal in life is to enjoy yourself and have lots of beautiful funny friends and enjoy everything and i'll finish this on um well i had a thing in california called bunny trading club and what i would do for parents is i would let them buy a rabbit and this is still true and in fact there's a special offer on the bunny trading club this year that will might be continued for the rest of my life i'm not sure but what it is, is you get a bunny and you take it home. And if your family's going on vacation and nobody wants to take care of the bunny, you can bring it back. And then you get $5 off the next time you want one again. And you can come back and get another bunny for whatever the price is of the bunny minus $5 because you already <laughs> paid for one. 
and you bring them back. And this made the parents really love it because they had all the equipment right. and they got it set up. So one day my little daughter, when she was about four and a half, and she was ever the tender little thing, and she comes to me and she has the little bunny just about this size, but you no, know, I guess it was bigger. It was mm -hmm. it was big enough to scratch her, and these aren't big enough to scratch you yet. But love she had the bunny. Love them. No, they're just adorable. Oh, these are called so pocket bunnies. I don't have terrible. any of the right size to show you <laughs> how you do bunny hypnosis. So maybe I could handle flair. Took look over this way should a second. Should we close this? Oh yeah, we should. Well, she probably won't come out. Hi, Luna. This is Luna's first litter. Oh, that's our first sweet. time of having babies. And that's how good they do. And this little doe is in the bottom of a cage over here. And when I picked her out, I really just liked her a lot. And I named her Flair because she has quite a personality. But she was the smallest one in her litter. And look at her ear. Aww. Somebody bit her. Because rabbits are highly territorial. And she was in somebody's way and they just bit her ear and pulled her out of the way. That's why you can't keep them together once they're about three or four months old. But anyhow. So what does your daughter do? This is, uh-oh. She's very scratchy, and that's what my daughter was doing. She was carrying it like this, and she goes, Mommy, let's eat this one. It's scratchy and mean. <laughs> and I said, oh. okay, Phoebe, would you like a different one? And she said, yeah, I'd like a different one. And we put it back in the cage. And, and that was that simple. And that's what these children would do. They would come back with these giant rabbits over their arms that they didn't want anymore. And the parents would be going, are you going to say goodbye to Georgie? Oh, the parents are boo-hooing. And the kids are walking off with their pocket bunny in their pocket going, bye, Georgie. <laughs> parents teach children to be ridiculously sentimental. This is food. This is the best mm -hmm. food on the planet. It's the highest source of zinc. Mm -hmm. You can't eat oysters anymore. Zinc, mm -hmm. according to the Tennessean, is what mm -hmm. keeps lead in your pencil. And the reason for that is zinc is the mineral that binds all your other minerals in. Mm -hmm. People have no education about food in our mm -hmm. country. This is what we're going to do. The name of the peace program outreach is Feed All Children. Educate all people how to feed themselves and others. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing that, and we're going to be teaching all this food stuff, mm -hmm. the Weston A. Price. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to get some people to come and mm -hmm. talk and all this stuff. So there's a whole bunch of people that say you can do that, but I'm the expert on rabbits yeah. and I don't approve I of putting rabbits out on the ground. And there's 25 scientific reasons to not right. do well, it that. And I don't care what cages. Joel Salatin and all the tractor people say. I've never asked them. <laughs> Those are called chicken tractors and they're fine for chickens. Right. Turkeys don't so like that. So how do that. you do your rabbits? I mean, if This is how you do rabbits. This is the only sane and sensible way to do okay. it. I have a five page article online for 10 years. Please ask all those questions to the article online. Okay. Because I can't use my voice to tell right. you all that. Well, I can and that's what I beg people to do before they the come here, in. is to please read the article mm -hmm. before they come here, because then I can spend my time explaining mm -hmm. to you what's better about that rabbit than that rabbit, to point out to you how you understand confirmation, just like you would in a racehorse or a dog in a dog show or anything like that. That's because, an amazing rabbit. Yeah, it is. That's Celeste. And she just had her first litter was uh, nine babies. And uh, the ones that we looked at, the tiny ones, that doe back mm -hmm. there, Sally, mm -hmm. she just had 10 on her first litter, nursed nine of them, and now just delivered 12 yesterday and is going to nurse nine of them again. So she probably has nine nipples, and that's what the problem mm -hmm. is in there. Mm -hmm. Because they can ones? only nurse for the number of places they have out there, because right. they don't lay down in the cage, and that's what people do when they're ignorant. They tell me, I wired the rabbit into the cage with chicken wire because she wouldn't lay down with her babies. Mm. The rabbit has to move around and pee and poop. You're making it pee in its litter box. Are you insane? It jumps in and out twice a day, carefully down into the hole where the fox doesn't see when it goes and mm -hmm. feeds all the babies the most rich mm -hmm. and nutritious food because it doubles mm -hmm. to triples its body weight in every day for three days. And mm -hmm. then half that every other day. And then every fourth day until it's three pound animal and you can eat it. Mm -hmm. And it happens so fast, you can't keep up with it. Mm -hmm.